Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us today. Today we are in Princeton, New Jersey. We're going to be doing the Princeton First Aid and Rescue Company. We're going to do a station crib, but we're going to have a special episode because we're going to do a collaboration with Jeremy from National Fire Radio. Let's go take a look. We're going to be doing a co-host on Princeton today and we're going to be talking to their chief together so we get a little bit different perspective on what's going on with this brand new house. Hey Jeremy, how you doing brother? Mike, how are you man? Good, finally uh, good to meet you up in person. You know, you were on the podcast with us and it was fantastic. We had a great back and forth and uh, it was only logical for the next step to jump in and see what you do and so thank you for the invitation. It's awesome to be here, Princeton, New Jersey. We got a lot to look at. Tell our viewers just a little bit about what National Fire Radio is. So National Fire Radio is a podcast and social media platform. Really was developed and created to protect the integrity of the job. And so I'm a firefighter myself, almost 30 years. The guys that helped me on the project, they've been a, they've been members, long-standing members in the fire service. And so what's really great about that is protecting the integrity of what we do. And so the podcast was designed and developed to tell the stories of the senior man. Experience matters in firefighting. And so when we can protect the integrity of those stories, when guys are on the job for 25, 30, 35 years and they leave, we wanna make sure their experience stays. And that way we can educate the next generation. It's very much what you're doing with your channel. Yeah. It's educating that next generation. And that's one thing that I noticed when I you know, came across your channel is the topics that you cover, cover the full range of a senior guys and getting those younger guys involved. And you know we mesh very well, which is why I wanted to do a collaboration. This is cool, right? Because on top of that, I'm an apparatus geek too, right? And so you do the station stuff, that you hop in and do some of the apparatus stuff. I love to dive all in on apparatus because we love to share those tips, tricks, and hacks on how departments are building apparatus because we always talk about firefighting is local, and that's why because the apparatus have to has to represent the areas in which we respond. Exactly. And so we're gonna, we got a lot to do here. All right, let's go take a look at Matt and uh, have him show us around. Awesome. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Mike. Matt, Jeremy. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Welcome yeah. to Princeton. Yeah, we appreciate it. How about we uh, walk on in and take Come a look at what in. you got? So Matt, you invited us in a while ago and one of your lieutenants, Ari, uh, you know, has been in contact with me and you guys have a new building here, which is why I wanted to come see what you have. You're also EMS related, not necessarily always fire related. I do a lot of fire stuff on the YouTube channel, but I also want to include the EMS and police. And you know, the opportunity to come up to Princeton and take a look at that was pretty cool. And that's why we're here. I noticed a couple of things when I was doing my research. I noticed that you have a couple memorial wall here uh, and the location of where you're at is pretty unique. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? So the location, this is our, our new station here. We came out here in 2019. Very happy to be here and happy to be able to show our, our, our nice new building and our, our new setup we have here. Okay, um, and this is the foyer. This is where the public would come in. Yep, so we'd come in uh, off of our, our main entrance here. Um, so a couple of different things to look at. Our memorial wall here. So this end, you know, all of our, our uh, past members and then uh, our tribute to Mike Kenwood, which was a, uh, a member who uh, died in the line of duty. Mm. Um, so we have a couple different areas in our, our station dedicated to that. I'll, I'll kind of point that out as we walk through. This is the kind of the, the main part. And then we have a couple other things around the station that I'll, I'll point out as we okay. go around. Okay. Um, Chief, so important, right, to protect those, protect the memories of those that have served for us. Losing members in a line of duty, certainly, but also retired members, people that have moved on. It's a beautiful remembrance you have here. Um, it's important to the foundation from which the department's built. Absolutely, absolutely. And an another kind of unique thing for us is that we aren't a, a municipal department, so we don't get municipal funding. We don't. We're not your traditional department setup. We're you know we're a nonprofit. We rely hugely on donations. So besides you know our our members and everything that they do. The general public and the donations that they give so we can provide the service we want to contribute to them as well so on the reverse wall we've got a tribute to all the people that have made major donations to keep this organization afloat um, and, and give us the funding that we need to do our day-to-day -day operations yeah i think that's one thing that a lot of the public doesn't realize is that you know a lot of the ems specifically across the united states uh, aren't funded by the municipality you know it, it's not required uh, in a lot of the Commonwealth areas for us. Mm -hmm. uh, 
as far as the tax-based stuff. Uh, and a lot of public doesn't realize that. Fire, EMS, and police are separated. Uh, some do, some don't, but a lot of them don't. And I think that's important that they need to understand that. Yeah, and a big thing in New Jersey, EMS isn't even an essential service. So, you know, you're required to have police, you're required to have fire, you're not required to have EMS. So a lot of towns, you know, in general population, they have no idea. They think, I call 911 and ambulance is showing up. There's no question about it. A whole lot more to it on the back end of things, making sure that that ambulance shows up every day. Exactly. Show me the rest of your house. Absolutely. So kind of walking into here, this is kind of our, our main entrance. Um, it breaks off into a lot of different things. Uh, we wanted to make sure we had a quick access if we had people scrambling in, because we are a hybrid department. We do have volunteers that still scramble. Okay. So you can pull into the parking lot and then you have a straight access right out to our vehicle bays by nice. going straight through. We also, you know, very much have a, a close tie with the public. So we, you know, other nonprofits in town, they will, you know, rent our building or they'll come here and hold classes and things of that nature. So we want to make sure that they have access to spaces to do stuff. Um, we have our training room right here on the on the left here. A lot of different community events happen here. We do training, police, fire, EMS. We hold, you know, drills and stuff here. Okay. Um, and we do a lot of training in this in this building. Walk on in. That's a nice big place too. So how many can you hold in this room? So we can hold, uh, it really depends on what we're doing. Um, so we can, you know, with the desks and stuff, we can do 30, 35 people. Okay. Um, d depending on what we're doing, if we're doing like a hands-on drill, we can move all this stuff out of the way and we can, you know, fit more people if we're doing actual, you know, we're doing knot drills and, you know, dragging people across the floor. A lot of different stuff that we can set this room up to right. do. Do you do any kind of public education, such as CPR training for the public? Like we, that? we do a lot of that stuff. So we do CPR, stop the bleed, um, we do refresher training for a lot of the, the local EMT classes. We do our refreshers, you know, for EMT. We do technical rescue training. So this will be like the classroom setting for doing, you know, vehicle rescue and any of the tech rescue disciplines that we do. Um, just having a nice big open space to do PowerPoints and, you know, the classroom stuff. And then we have breakout areas. So looking from the public aspect of it, and, you know, maybe I've been driving by, but I don't know how to get a hold of you. Is there a website that I can get a hold of? Maybe I want CPR yes. training for my kids or now babysitting or something like that. How do I go ahead and do that? So that's, that's a big thing. A lot of, you know, professions out there require now to have that, you know, basic first aid and CPR certification. So that's something we really push the community. So at our, our website, you know, PFARS.org, um, we've got links to go to any of our, our training stuff. We have a coordinator that does all of the CPR training and the, the basic first aid. And it goes from anywhere if you need certifications to be you know, a professional lifeguard or you know, something of that nature, or hey, you know, my 16 year old is starting babysitting and that's something they should have. We just want the basic, you know, how to do CPR. We can do that too. Well, it makes sense, right? Because when you rely on the public to help fund your mission, you want to open your building to them. You want to make them a part of your organization because if the public gets buy-in, then it's a partnership. And when it's a partnership, we can then succeed on the mission. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So coming down through our hallway here, um, this is our office suite. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this is where all of our staff will be working. Hey guys, sorry to hey interrupt. Guys. How are you? <laughs> nice to meet you all. So like I mentioned, we're hybrid department. So we've got paid staff volunteer, all basically working in here. Um, different workstations that will have people doing their charts, doing their school activities, whatever they need to do. A um, couple office spaces here, um, our development director, uh, the chief's office, and then at the end is the president's office. Okay. Um, where we really kind of handle the administrative workload of the organization. Right. Um, something you'll kind of see as we walk through the building, um, a big thing that we wanted, we wanted our, our core IT services to kind of be able to integrate throughout the building. So we have these displays in various rooms in the station. We also have strobe lights, speakers, and all that. So anywhere you're on the building, you're going to know if an assignment goes off. Okay. The screen will change, the strobes flash, speakers turn on, whole nine yards. So everyone, wherever you are, you're aware of, of calls going in and <laughs> exactly. out. Exactly. The one thing that kind of stood out to me right here, because uh, we've recently done a lot of station symposiums in regards to station building, I like the fact that you have windows, you have access to your administrative staff. You're not off in your own little separate building. You're not in your own little floor. Your staff can actually get a hold of you right away. And that's a pretty big thing to have nowadays, having that transparency and that, that uh, administrative staff being available. 
Yeah, we have kind of a running joke with these offices. I, I have this huge glass window into my office. We kind of refer to this as the fishbowl. Okay. Because um, I, I sit in there and it's it's not like right. you're, you're hiding from anybody. If, if something comes up, I'm, I'm right here. Right. And as we progress in these in these different um, you know fields, fire, EMS, police, technology obviously comes along with it. We need to embrace it. This certainly, this institute, your, your building, your infrastructure certainly embraces the next step of where we're headed with technology. Yep. And a lot of the stuff that we developed with this building was a direct response to what we didn't like about our old station. Um, and like you mentioned, windows, not just in the offices, but natural light. You'll see that throughout this entire building. So and this also promotes one department, career, volunteer. You put them all in one room with the Absolutely. same resources. It creates one department. Yep, that's that's a very big deal to us. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we can kind of working around the desks here. Okay. Uh, we'll go into the conference room here. It's a nice conference room too. Yeah, again, we wanted to have breakout space so that we could do multiple activities. Right. So a big thing with doing EMT training is you needed to have breakout rooms. You need to have places to be able to have multiple things happening at the same time. A great area, again, and we allow other people from the town to come in here and use this as office space. If you needed to come in and do a conference, it's all set up. We've got the polycom system. We've got video conferencing. Yeah. Post COVID, everything all about virtual. So we've got you know cameras and, and all that stuff set up in multiple locations that we can do video conferencing, video training, all of that stuff. We're, we're fully equipped to do You're all that. You're ready to go. So this was your old building. That's our old building. So this is on North Harrison Street. Um, in the background is where the Princeton Shopping Center is. Okay. Um, so the shopping center is continue to develop, um, like in a lot of towns, housing, 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 housing. So we've got massive housing projects under construction right now. Okay. Um, this building still stands there. Um, the town is now actually the owner of that. Um, but you can see that this is, you know, we had four vehicle bays. Yeah. That's, that's it. And they just fit the trucks. So right. obviously when we get to our, our bay here, the entire contents of our old building fits in just the base space of this one. So <laughs> believe it, yeah. huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Another uh, memorial for Kenwood. Right. Uh, we, that's, again, all over the place. And then again, we just, trying to keep historical things around. Sure. You know, we were, we're very uh, closely tied with Princeton University. Okay. You know, we, we cover the, the municipality, we also cover the university. We do a lot of stuff with them. Um, so we get a lot of volunteers that are university students. Okay. So for a long time, we used to take you know class pictures yep. of our volunteers. So we've got some examples right. of that up on the wall of you know volunteers that served here at, while they were university students. So we'll come out the, the door here and kind of go down this okay, main hallway. Okay, so this door goes back out in the hallway. So you don't, if they're using this as a conference room, um, they, they don't have to go through the offices there. Correct, yeah, so this is split up again. If we had other people coming in here, we can kind of lock off doors and if this was open to the public, they can have access to just come into this room and our office staff and all that can continue doing their work and not be interrupted. Or if we have something in this room, they can kind of be set up and kind of funnel into this room, and then they all have access to facilities and things of that right. nature. And that also keeps that privacy of you know the uh, HIPAA regulations. You lock that Correct. down; it's all safe. No one has to worry about losing their information. Yep, yep. All important things. Um, behind you, another kind of reference to our lineage, keeping a lot of the old relics of you know where we started. So we got you know a lot of our old radios that I'm sure you guys grew up using. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. the big old bricks that you know. Yeah, the walk life, like that. The Life Pack Fives. Yeah. yeah so yeah. A, another unique part of, of our history is we had one of the first uh, paramedic units that was not hospital based. Okay. And so that's where we started. Uh, our life mobile was doing ALS. It was ALS BLS well before that started being in a normal hospital based system. Um, and that's you know reference the fact the fact that we used to have you know paramedics on duty. It was Princeton First Aid's Life Mobile. And that's that's where it started for us. Well, that's, that's pretty cool that's to cool. know. You know, I come from Pennsylvania, where a lot of the EMS, you know, started out as hospital based, and now pretty much no hospital based. Uh, but in here in Jersey, from my understanding, is a lot of it is still hospital based as far as ALS services. Is that correct? It's almost strictly hospital based ALS, and even on the BLS, the basic life support um, areas, we're we're very much reverse of Pennsylvania. It started off almost completely municipal and you know town based and now it's getting more and more hospital based so a lot of the the areas are getting covered by hospital based ambulances as well as the paramedic units. okay okay uh, so walking down here again we're going to kind of pass our you know wall of stuff that we brought from our old building a lot of the old you know black and whites yeah um, that we brought yeah. from the, the old station you know wanting to keep the the history alive and remember where we came from have you guys always been a rescue squad and a first aid squad so we actually 
broke off of the fire department. So mm. we were, you know, Princeton Fire has been around almost as long as this country, one of the you know, oldest fire yes. departments. We broke off of uh, one of the engine companies uh, back in 1939, broke off, started as just a, you know, a first, you know, first aid company, kind of a, a, a part of the, the engine company. Really kind of came into our own, uh, moved into our, our old station um, and started doing rescue shortly thereafter. Um, our first rescue truck, you know, going back to the old, you know, bread truck days. Of, sure. You know, we had our boat, we'll throw it up on the roof, you know, the old yeah. John boats. And, you know, that's, you know, we're one of the oldest rescue companies in the state. So we've been doing rescue um, for a really long time. So we're, you know, one of the originators in the state. Um, you know, we're one of the only heavy rescue companies in the county. Um, so we've, we've been doing this a really long time. And I know it's, again, New Jersey's a little different. Elsewhere, there's a lot of fire companies. It's almost always fire-based rescue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's one thing I was just going to mention. It's very rare to have an ambulance service actually be a rescue to you. You know, that's fire department. That's you know, that they're kind of bread and butter because fires now are getting less and less, and they're picking up a lot of the rescue. That makes it attractive for me as a paramedic. They go, hey, I might want to go work for this guy over here because not only can I run on the ambulance and do the service that mm -hmm. I like to do, but I also can venture into the rescue aspect of it. Rescues are just getting more and more complicated. There takes a lot of hands, and there's less hands to be able to do those skills. So we don't have, you know, endless numbers of volunteers coming out like you know we used to 10, 20, 30 years ago. Right. We have what we have, and we need to work together to get the the best outcome for our patients. So we work really well with our fire department, both the career and volunteer side there, and we work seamlessly on scenes uh, with you know police, fire, EMS, OEM. Everybody works together to get the job done. So kind of working our way through our, our hallway, we're kind of make our way out to the bay. Okay. Um, so we got gym space in here. Um, again, trying to nice gym. Kind of incorporate that you know physical health component to right. what we do. So this is obviously something we did not have in our old building. <laughs> there was definitely not space for it. Um, but you know there is downtime to the stuff that we do, and it also encourages people when they're not on duty to come in here and have things that they can do here. Yeah, that's the one thing that I've noticed as I've traveled across the country. A lot of the fire departments are really getting into the health and safety of their, their providers. EMS, we're behind the eight ball. We're 10, 15 years behind Absolutely. the eight ball. The fact that Princeton has decided, hey, you know what? We're going to catch up to those guys, maybe even surpass them, and put this in there, that's huge. Absolutely, yeah, and it's, it's something that you know, for the, the people that have been around longer, it's, you know, what do, we, what do we need this for? And it's that idea of like, oh, you know, this is another way to, oh, you had a, a rough shift, you know, come work out for a little while, release some of that stress. It's, yeah. It goes in that whole mental health component as well. So it's- And also deal. too, it's mission driven, right? If the department supports health and wellness for their own people, this is a very good representation of that, right? If we give them a space within their building where they can unwind from that tough call or where they just want to push themselves to be personally a little bit better mm -hmm. or more healthy. This is an option and an opportunity for them. And that allows for people to understand that their department that they belong to, that organization wants the very best for them. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. All right, so walking out this way, we're gonna kind of cut through the beginning of our, our vehicle bay here. Okay, uh, and for the viewers that are watching right now, we are gonna come back to the, the apparatus bay. We'll talk about all these vehicles in just a little bit, but there's some unique things out here that we want to talk about. Yep, so we have all of our, our rescue gear here, and you'll see two different types of, of gear. So again, because we're a hybrid department, we do carry the, the lighter weight gear. So this is just your, your USAR gear for doing just tech rescue. Okay. Um, and then we do have our dual trained members that are firefighters and rescue techs that do wear the traditional uh, structural firefighting gear. Okay, um, okay. So if we don't need to have that heavier stuff on, having that option for lighter gear, just makes everyone's life a little bit easier. Yeah, sure. yeah. And I better. recently just got upgraded to a new set of EMS gear, and you know I do the same thing in my trunk. Now I got a set of boots and coat for EMS, set of boots and coat for structural fire. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Coming through this doorway, so our office space will feed directly into here. Okay. Um, so when we come out for calls, it's a direct access right out to our bays. And that's good for the design of buildings. When people are looking at trying to redesign or upgrade their building, they got to think about the flow to, to get into the apparatus bay from whatever living situation they're at. Yeah, again, response time is key. You don't want to have wasted time, you know, all right, I'm doing my office work and now I have to go through all this space to try to get out to the bay to do our primary mission. We want to make sure everything kind of funnels into our bays so that when we have to go out on calls, that's the fastest thing that we do. Right. Um, so a couple kind of key things that we have in here. Um, this is kind of our status board. Okay. We, you know, let people know what 
trucks are in, what the lineup is. We do rotate our, our vehicles around, make sure they get even wear and tear, lets people know where the equipment is and things of that nature. Um, again, our centralized IT stuff kind of splits out in here. Um, so we've got our, our call board, basically that'll notify us when calls come in. It'll tell you, give you a quick map of where you're going, what the call type is. Okay. Um, and then this is our hospital status. Okay. That's bunch good to of, have yeah, too. So a, yeah. a bunch of different hospitals we serve. Um, in being in Mercer County, we're pretty busy. Um, and the hospitals do go on divert every once in a while. So kind of as you're passing through, you can look up, it'll show up in red if a hospital's at capacity, over capacity, that we can kind of have it in our heads before we go out on the street. All right, this hospital's busy, we should probably kind of direct our patients to go somewhere else. Who's populating so, that data? So this, this actually comes from the state. So the okay. state kind of has a, a joint system that everything kind of feeds into. So the hospitals can call that, nice. that system and everybody knows and it just gets fed out onto here. Nice. Right. Yeah, it's a good way to do that. Yeah, yep. for sure. Um, and then just some other basic cleaning stuff, boot washer. Boot, yeah. We want our, you know, fire's kind of simple. You, you drop all your gear and you get into street clothes or your station wear and you're good. EMS, you have what you have. It, right. So if you're going out into a field somewhere and you get muddy and you get all messed up, you right. don't want to drag all that through our nice station. So <laughs> boot washer, yeah. decon sink, basic you know, cleaning stuff that we have here. Uh, behind you, were these our accountability tags or? Yep, so this is our pass tag board. Um, so all of our members have their pass tags on here. So again, if you're coming in for a scramble call, you can kind of grab your tag and get on the truck. So we don't forget about accountability. Okay. So every one of our trucks has a ring in it. You get in it, you clip your ring in and you're good to go. And this brings us back out into the hallway. Right. Right. So this comes out into our hallway. Uh, this is kind of the, the T between a, a bunch of places we've already been. This is our main office space here. Okay. Coming back out there, that's where the gym was. Yep. A couple quick things to mention here. Um, we've got our member board that's okay. on the wall here. Again, with a, with a hybrid department, we've got a lot of different faces. So being able to put a, a name to a face, we've got a lot of our crews kind of broken up here. We do you know, high call takers, kind of getting that camaraderie of, you know, I'm going to take more calls than you and yeah, you know, get yeah, that and a little, little competition. friendly competition going right, on. Right, right. Um, and then all of our different membership statuses. Um, right. Again, life members, always mentioning them. Um, they're up here. So even when they're not riding anymore, we keep keep them active. I really like that you actually take their picture and put it yes. up. I work at a station that we went from, you know, 15 employees and volunteers to well over 60 and 70. I don't know some of the people I walk in. I walk into today and I'm like, who are you? He's like, oh, I'm one of the new staff members. Right. And I don't know him. I don't recognize him. Uh, but having a board like this, I could take just a couple of minutes and say, oh, yeah, I've seen that person. And I can start putting a name with that face. This is a really good thing to Smart. do. Smart. Well, yeah. and when you work in shift work, your shifts might be total opposite. So how, you're never going to have that opportunity until maybe on the call one day. Right. Maybe in the street, all of a sudden, you go, oh, I remember you. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And over here, it looks like your crew room. So this is our, yep, this is our crew room. Um, in, in the olden days, we used to refer to it as like the day room. Yep. Um, this is kind of, we, we changed the, the name to the, the great room. Okay. Again, big thing for us is kind of making a, a open, welcoming area so that you can have your, your crews kind of all be able to relax, interact with each other, um, encourage people when they're off duty to come in, kind of sit down, you know, watch TV, have a movie night whatever it might be, right? kind of come in and relax. Yeah, it definitely gives you that homey feel, but it also kind of gives me that little cafe feel. You got a little breakout table here, a <laughs> little breakout table there, you know, just sit we, back and... Yeah, we have a little bit of everything in here. Uh, it's it's definitely a unique feel, and again, windows everywhere, lots of natural light. Um, Want to kind of, you know, get that, that natural feeling of, you know, you're not in a basement anymore, right. overcoming our old station. Okay. Well, you um, want that environment that invites people in, right? If we have a cold, sterile environment, doesn't feel like a home, it's not homey. Who wants to be there? Right. Nobody. Right. It's just a job at that That's point. right. Yeah. I'm um, kind of walking into our kitchen dining nice. room area. Kind of a unique thing that we had. We had this table made up. Um, gotta have the fire table. So this is the EMS table. Yes. Yeah, you gotta have those. Same, same principle. Yeah. Again, <laughs> kind of acknowledging the progression of, our, of yeah. our patches here. So the original one, the second version, and then our current version of the patch as we kind of developed through the years and you know developed the, the service that we, we do. Right. Um, and again, having that area that people can kind of sit around that table. I mean, so much of that, that history is you sit around a table and you know, have those conversations. A lot of the problems are solved around these tables. Yeah, that's a true story. <laughs> so. um, and then having a, a big kitchen space. Right. Again, another deficiency of our old station is we had a kitchen that was arm to arm and that was you know wall to yeah, wall right. and that was it and the old galley was, kitchens yeah and if you were using the oven nobody else is in that kitchen because <laughs> there's no space so we right. got a nice commercial sized kitchen um you know, little fridge freezer commercial stove 
Um, we're also set up that if we have a prolonged kind of deployment, if we're in like a storm mode, we've got a place we have our own food, our own stuff here that we can function out of the station for a prolonged period of time because we all are completely self-sufficient here. Yeah. yeah. And I like even the architecture that they put in here, the just small designs that make it feel more homey rather than that square box. You know, they're putting pillars in. It, it's a simple concept, but it makes a big difference on the feel of the building. Yeah, especially, you know, even with the, the way the ceiling works, we've got this nice wooden ceiling, the, the, the way the lights work. Everything's kind of very unique and it's not your traditional, this is a municipal building and it's built, you know, in a certain way. It's, it's not much, a barn. It's not, not, it's not a <laughs> barn, it's a much more open feel. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's very beneficial to us. Yeah, it makes me want to stay here. It wants me to go, hey, I, I don't mind working for a place like this because I can be comfortable, I can take my calls, I can take care of the patients, but they're also taking care of me. Absolutely. Kind of working our way over here, another little breakout area that we have. Um, this is what we kind of refer to as our study. So okay. in here, again, having a lot of university students, we have an area so it's like, hey, I need somewhere that's not my dorm room. Come study. I want to, you know, have some downtime. Right. But also, you know, if something goes out, I want to be able to run out of call. Right. Right. So you can come out here. It's a nice quiet space. There's desk space. You can come bring your laptop, do your homework, whatnot. Um, we had a lot of people, you know, during COVID that my office is closed. I need somewhere to kind of, you know, sit and do my, my office work. But I'm not tied to an office. I can go out on calls. I can come in here and be available to respond. That is one thing that I've noticed, again, as we travel across the country, a lot of the volunteer stations specifically are making spaces for work at home people yeah. saying, you know, get out of your house a little bit, come work to here. We're not saying don't do your job, but while you're in between whatever, if you get a call, go ahead and take it. We'll give you the space, we'll give you the internet, we'll give you whatever you need to do, do your job, and then also help us out, which is also helping your community out. I think the other thing too, right on top of that, is also knowing your community. You have a large university here, thousands and thousands <clears throat> of potential volunteers. So offer the infrastructure for them. Yeah. If they can get out of their dorm to come down here to study or to have a meal here or to watch TV down here, it just creates that environment that's welcoming. And all it takes is one or two to come to see what this is all about, that the infrastructure is in place to support what they want to be and who they want to be. They're going to bring more people with them. Right. So it's for you as an organization to understand the makeup of your town and how to go out and attract new members. You have to have infrastructure like this. It's important now more than ever. With university students, this is their first taste of actual yes. medicine. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of doctors that end up coming out. They, they had their start as an EMT on the Princeton First Aid and Rescue cool. Squad. Pretty cool. I think that makes a big difference for their practice as they continue on is, you know, they get that practical experience with patients and stuff like that. Uh, rather than just doing all classroom time uh, from inside the school. Yeah. So again, we kind of come down our, our main hallway here and we'll kind of go into where our, our living quarters are. Okay. So in here, this is kind of our, our public bathrooms. Uh, so again, if we had somebody that was doing training or office work or anything like that, they have bathrooms they have access to. And then this is kind of our living quarters. Okay. So this part is locked off from the public. This is where you have to have key fob to get in Correct. and stuff like yep. that. So okay. th this can be locked off and then this is where all of our or a bunk room and you know kind of living quarters are okay um, so two bathrooms in here including showers so again if you're stuck here for multiple shifts in a row and you have snowstorm or something of that nature you have a shower here that you can get cleaned up we have our own washer and dryer you can do your laundry here um, general hygiene things that makes everybody a lot happier when yeah. they're here yeah exactly um, they are set up as Primarily individuals, so everyone has their own bunk room. Okay. Um, they all have their own speakers and notification systems. They all have their own phones. It's very similar to what they do for firehouses where they have, you know, the engine squad gets a tone, ambulance squad gets a tone, truck squad gets a tone, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. um, so each, each bunk room kind of has two bunks. So again, if we surge up for additional crews, we can use it as bunk, bunk beds. Yeah. Um, but they are set up primarily as individuals. How many rooms do you actually have? So we have the, the six here that we can double up. So okay. we can have up to 12. Wow. Um, and then we do have bunks that we can deploy to other areas of the building if we need to. Okay. I don't know if so you got the lockers on the outside rather than inside the room. So that makes it easy for shift change. I can come in, I can get my gear, set up my stuff, do my truck check while they're finishing, sleeping, getting ready, and then move out. Yeah, and everyone has their own space. So if you want to keep your own stuff here, especially in the, the days of COVID when we, you, everyone had their own mask they had to carry around with them, you have your own area, you can lock up your own stuff, have a change of clothes, gym clothes, you have your own area to do stuff. Very nice. Cool. 
And then from here, you can go right out to the engine bay again, right? Yep, so we've got two different doors depending on where you all are in the hallway again. It's a fairly long hallway, yeah. Trying to encourage that response time. We need to get out to the bay, we need to get in the trucks and on the road. Okay. Uh, we don't want to have to go, all right, let's go all the way back through the building to come back out to the vehicle bay. Quick access to the bay and the trucks to get out on the road. Right. So coming out to our, our vehicle base here, um, again, going through our, our equipment. This is where we keep all of our dry suits. Um, they're set up again. So if you're coming from an ambulance and you're going to be deploying on, on the Marine unit, uh, we've got all your suits right here next to our boat. So it's all quick access, grab your stuff, get in the truck, hook it up and off you go. Okay. So tell, tell us a little bit more, tell our viewers a little bit more what you do as far as rescue is concerned. Because, you know, when I think of rescue, I think of vehicle rescue but you have a boat here. What other disciplines do you actually do here? So we do them all. So we do all of the technical rescue here, okay. including all of the marine stuff. So we have a boat. Um, we do all of our surface swift ice rescue stuff that is kind of marine based. Um, we also do structural rescue. So building collapse, uh, rope, high and low angle, wow. vehicle rescue, trench rescue. We do it all. Dude, so it's, that's, that's significant. You know, that's a lot of education, a lot of training uh, that you got to go through that you guys are providing and you know me again as an EMS provider, I'm like that sounds pretty cool. I might want to go, you know, start working for you. So you've got all of that initial EMS training that you have to do, and that training obviously gets more and more and more. Same on sure. the fire side, you're getting more and more training that you have to do right off the bat, and then you have all of this specialized training. So we've got people that are, no, I'm not really a big fan of height, so I'm not going to be doing the rope stuff. Sure. But then you got people like. Yeah, I want to go jump off that building. That sounds fantastic. So I'm going to go do rope stuff. Right. So you can do, you know, kind of pick and choose and do the different stuff that you want to do. Um, and we have all of that under one roof. That's awesome. So. It's nice to have all those different disciplines because you can pull from your whole group for the people that have their strong points and they can focus on one or two disciplines instead of trying to master them all. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. yep. That's, that's a huge thing. Working at our vehicles here. So we've got our boat here. Okay. Um, a lot of the stuff that we do in Princeton is flood water. Okay. So we do have a lake, um, Lake Carnegie. We, so we do a little bit of normal, I guess, traditional surface water rescue. But when we get heavy rains, hurricanes, things of that nature, Princeton becomes an island. So we have to, we do a lot of water rescues. So the, what's special about this boat is that it's got a jet drive on it. So okay. there's no actual spinning propeller um, because of the type of service that we do. So going through flood waters, you know, low draft areas where you only have six, 10 inches of water, that's what this is built for. And that's towed by the vehicle in front of it? Yep, so this is our uh, utility vehicle. It kind of doubles as a lot of different stuff. So it's a command vehicle. It's got all the command, traditional like fire command, yep. where you'd have your radios and stuff off the back of it. Um, it's also our four wheel drive vehicle. If we need to get through to, you know, up a driveway or something in a snowstorm, okay. um, it's also our, our primary tow vehicle. So for towing the boat, um, it's all equipped to do all that stuff. And operationally speaking, you guys run incident command like you like a fire command would be on any large scale or, or more than a EMS call per se, Correct. you would run an incident command system as well. Yeah, we do a lot, of, again, having that relationship with you know police, fire, EMS, sure. we do a lot of unified command. So depending on what kind of incident it is, will kind of depend on what vehicle we're working off the back of. So fire chief's there, it's a structure fire. You've got representatives from police and EMS all at the command post. So, if, you know, hey, we've got a, a firefighter down, you immediately have EMS response there and yeah. you can get your mutual aid going. I can right. tell you, I think it's so important when we talk about incident command systems like that, Mike, and I'm sure you can attest to this, it's, it varies so greatly. The fire department's so good at running an incident command system, but when you start plugging in the other agencies, a lot of times, it's piecemeal, yeah. but it's nice to be able to have your own support staff that can help that incident command system by bringing your own command post, your own equipment to the game because you're just that much more dialed in to the incident. Right, right. Yeah. And speaking of game, you also do a lot of the, the field events for yeah. Princeton University. Correct. That in itself huh. is an incident command. That, sure. that is that is a animal all in and of itself. Got, Major football events, hockey, basketball now. You've got multiple units or some something god forbid happens right you can ramp up a response pretty quickly right yeah. so as we're coming up to the front of the building here i noticed some things you have the trifold doors love it okay. absolutely love it you know we've been doing a series on them uh we talk about it down at our, our most recent conference of buildings these things you know make a big difference as far as time response they really do um again our old station we had that traditional drum roll up door and you hit that button and you wait and wait and it rolls up and Again, in an ambulance, you don't know what's above you. Same <laughs> right. with a fire truck. Way too many people end up hitting the building. Right. You, know, you hit, you clip that door because you thought it was up. 
you don't have to worry about that with these doors. These things open within three, four seconds. The other thing I noticed is your floor. The design of this apparatus bay, you have nice wide openings. You have the floor that's painted so they can visualize that in their mirrors. It makes it easy to back up and you have plenty of depth between your vehicles. Many times when we design uh, fire stations or some of our older fire stations, we're bumper to bumper and you have enough room to actually do a walk around. We're built for expansion. Something as simple as our side view mirrors. Our old station, we had to reverse them so that they went in instead of out. Okay. Because otherwise we'd clip the side of the wall as we exited the building. <laughs> right, so just right. having normal functioning mirrors, huge innovation yeah. for us. Of, yeah. Hey, this is how the truck's supposed to be designed. Now I noticed as we're coming across, you have a, a couple different ambulances. They look pretty much uniform. Can you tell me, are they all ALS? Are they BLS? And what kind of ambulances are they? So all of our trucks are BLS. So this okay. is all BLS normal ground ambulance. Okay. Uh, we meet up with paramedics that are hospital based. We had actually one stationed in Princeton for us. Okay. Um, so that we'll meet them on scene in a chase car they'll jump onto our ambulance and we'll transport to the hospital okay um, they're all set up basically the same so of our four we've got three of them that are Horton ambulances and the ones the pl custom okay um even with the different manufacturers they're all set up the same so that you can pretty much blindly reach over your shoulder know what piece of equipment you're grabbing and a lot of it's you know muscle memory making sure that the crews know where all that equipment is okay and the back behind this ambulance, you have a pretty unique truck. So that's our kind of our support truck. So the truck that's back there is our rehab unit. Okay. Um, so that is a county-based unit that for any you know major scene, usually it's a it's a fire. So anything that goes over, above a, uh, the first alarm, we'll get a dispatch for a rehab unit. So we've got you know, a tent in there that we can inflate and do air conditioning, heating. Wow. Um, you know, do full full rehab for firefighters. Um, that usually will couple with our rescue truck to do the bottle filling, Okay. Uh, but it'll do food and beverages and things of that nature to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. Awesome. Right, right. And the, the very unique thing about your place is this truck right here. So this is our technical rescue truck. Um, so this is our, our new truck that, um, the 2022, that we bought from Pierce. Um, so this does all of our technical rescue. This was, the big thing with this is we went from a smaller Pierce truck, um, and then we had a tow behind trailer that would be brought with one of our, um, tow vehicles. Right. We we knew that we needed to get everything in one vehicle. I mean, trying to make sure that we get all of our supplies on scene was huge. So we took this, you know, 20, 22 foot Hallmark trailer that had all of our trench equipment in it. And we said, all right, met with the, our salesperson. We need this truck and this trailer to be one. So uh, worked really well with Pierce to kind of design that to get that all into one truck. And this was the result. Okay. Okay. And now if I remember, Jeremy, you back a little while ago, you did a feature on this truck, right? We did. Yeah, and where could people, if they wanted to look at your videos, where would they find that? Sure, so you can find that two ways. You can find it through our YouTube channel at National Fire Radio. You can also go to Fire and Safety Services, which is the uh, Pierce dealer in the state of New Jersey, and we've done some projects with them as well. But I will say this, Mike, because I know you're going to be doing more apparatus content as we go. So a little teaser for standby, there's more coming. But this apparatus really encompasses what you need in a special services vehicle. When you talk about technical rescue and the amount of equipment that you need to bring on one chassis, on one truck, on one build, Princeton really knocked it out of the park. And that's why we highlighted this apparatus uh, in previous content. And so a lot more to come. You're going to have a lot of fun with this when you get inside. Yeah, so we're definitely going to do a walk around on this one too. We'll do a station rig specifically so you guys see it on our channel. But, you know, don't be afraid to go to other channels. Check out our other guys. National Fire Radio does a fantastic job. You know, maybe catches a little detail that I might miss and vice versa. Well, that's what it's all about, right? We're here with Princeton today, but it's a collaborative effort. If we want to push this job forward, the fire service, EMS, police, the emergency services, we need to work together. Let's spread a good message. Let's work with great chiefs, great departments, and really put together a solid message that promotes the job. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Chief, thank you so much for uh, inviting us out. We, uh, we really appreciate thank it. You, We're Chief. looking forward to Pleasure. taking a better look at the, the rescue here. Jeremy, thank you for joining us today. Mike, Great. thanks for letting me crash, man. This yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Like I said, you were on the podcast and we had a good back and forth. This was fun. I've watched your videos. I see what you're doing out there. I know how much good you bring to the job. I know how much good you bring. You're educating that next generation about wanting to be in the emergency services. And for that, I'm grateful because that's the mission of making us succeed. Absolutely. So viewers, thank you all for watching. As always, do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit notification, share these videos, we really appreciate it. Thank you for Princeton uh, First Aid and Rescue for inviting us out, and uh, we'll see you again next week. <clears throat>